Welcome to Still Growing in Grace, a weekly program dedicated to inspiring joy, giving hope, and delighting in grace. This program is brought to you by Hope Fellowship, your community church, and Growing in Grace Ministries Canada. I'm Pastor Michael Zenker, and for the next half hour, I'll be sharing with you a message of hope that will help expand your understanding of God's love and amazing grace. So many are tired of trying harder to live the Christian life. I've got great news for you. You can stop trying. God already deeply loves you, totally accepts you, and really, really likes you. Enjoy today's program as we dig deeper into what it means to still be growing in grace. Welcome back to another episode of Still Growing in Grace. I hope this series has been quite enlightening for you. It is one of the most important series I've, I've ever, ever taught. I think the topic is... It hits every single heart of every human. We all have to deal with the topic of forgiveness, pain, how to walk through it, relational pain. We began this series talking about vertical forgiveness, that we have already been forgiven by our Heavenly Father, but what does it now look like relationally? Because it's relationally we have the trouble living with one another and forgiving one another, especially when things have been hurt. We've covered 18 things of what forgiveness is not. I'll recap them in just a few minutes. We ended last week talking about the idea of forgiveness not being the same thing as restoration. Uh, I believe many individuals are hindered from forgiving somebody because somehow in their mind they believe or have been told or taught that in order to forgive, you must immediately restore people. They're automatically allowed to, uh, to have access to your life again. And it's a brutal shaming game. Uh, it doesn't allow for any process of healing to happen. It, it, in fact, it in, encourages bad relationships and more violence and more abuse in people's lives. Uh, we ended up talking about uh, confrontation and the importance of it and what to look for. That when we confront somebody, if we do, and when that time comes, um, we're looking for a, a confession and conduct change. And until that conduct change and both conf true confession and conduct change happens, they're not allowed back in your life. You can forgive them, but until they change things, don't let them back in your life. This is really important, especially for some uh, relationships where somebody has been quite abusive. And unfortunately, until they do that, you're not a doormat. You're not a, uh, a punching bag for anybody. You're a, a child of God created for love, created for intimacy, created for warmth, health, for happiness. That's how God made you. So when somebody is abusing that, they need to be out of your life in a very big way, especially if it's a serious, serious pattern. I know I'll be talking about this whole confrontation thing uh, in a couple of weeks because I'm going to talk about uh, in the process of how to forgive, uh, probably next week I'll hit it. Um, you're going to hear easily the importance of confrontation and when. So when is a good time to confront? For some personalities, it's immediate. They think they can immediately confront. For those people, I'll say, whoa, put on the brakes there, tiger. Uh, hold back a minute. Um, there may be time uh, that you need to process your own pain before you confront and for those who don't like confrontation at all and avoid it at all costs, I'll give you some tips on that. But that's that's going to be in another week or two. I think you'll enjoy that too. Really, really big. Lewis Smeets, when he talked about forgiveness, he says this, Love does not forever cover up for people. It doesn't forever find excuses for them or protect them. I know a man whose wife is an alcoholic who, who, when she drinks, is abusive and cutting, and she hurts her husband very deeply, but he doesn't dare tell her to get help for herself. He doesn't dare leave her on her own to decide whether she wants to get help, and he certainly won't get out of the house to protect himself because he says he loves her too much. The truth is he doesn't love her enough. He doesn't love her with the bold love of Jesus Christ. The love that would respect her and give her the simplest respect that would let her take responsibility for herself and what she is doing. When we really love people with respect, we will let them be accountable for what they do to us. And then we will face the crisis of forgiveness. 
Listen, this topic is not simple. It is not easy. It is not for the weak. It is for the strong. Oh, wait, just a minute. Don't see yourself as weak if you do. You have the strength of Christ in you. You have all the strength you need, everything you need. Is, is God bringing a list of things to your mind that are not honestly dealt with? Will you write them down? This might be a good therapeutic thing to do. Write them down and see how, how you can deal with them in the weeks to come. Maybe you've rationalized pain away. Maybe you've made excuses. Maybe you have to grow up in your understanding of forgiveness and what reconciliation looks like. Maybe God is using this to strengthen you to actually be loving. Maybe you've misunderstood love. Maybe you've associated being loving with letting people get away with stuff. That's not what love is. That's not what forgiveness is either. Forgiveness doesn't mean people get away with stuff. It means it's for us to work through. We do it. When we forgive, it starts our process of healing. Psalm 39 is a beautiful psalm. It says, O Lord, you have examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit or when I stand. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. <laughs> that is a great psalm. Let God allow you to face the pain so he can deal with it once and for all. You can't do it on your own. Listen, if you've got a person in your life who's hurting you, who is driving you nuts, just crazy, and you've bought into the lie that forgiveness equals reconciliation, you might find some freedom today. Oh, you may have thought too, love implies that they're automatically allowed to stay in your life or continue their harmful patterns. Uh -uh. There's so much more coming. There's so much better news coming. Listen to this quote I, I came across. Hurt people hurt people. That's how pain goes patterns get passed on generation after generation after generation break the chain today meet anger with sympathy contempt with compassion and cruelty with kindness greet grimaces with smiles forgive and forget about finding fault love is the weapon of the future <laughs> all right what have we covered so far 18 things of what forgiveness is not. And then we're going to move on to what forgiveness is. You'll like that. Unlearning the mess. Number one, forgiveness is not minimizing the hurt. Forgiveness is not the absence of pain or hurts or the feelings of betrayal may never go away. Forgiveness is not easy. Forgiveness is not time as in time heals all wounds. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is not being naive or ignoring it. Forgiveness is not justifying, excusing, or explaining away the offense. Forgiveness is not waiting for the other person to repent. Forgiveness is not a quick fix. Forgiveness is not telling the offender you forgive them. Forgiveness is not asking God to forgive the offender. Forgiveness is not telling someone you have been hurt. Forgiveness is not turning the other cheek or a blind eye. Forgiveness is not just a one-time event. Forgiveness is not letting the person off the hook. Forgiveness is not pardoning what they did. And forgiveness is not restoration. I hope that that has been a helpful unpacking of what forgiveness is not. So let's get into some good news. What is forgiveness then? This is a very huge topic. So far in this course, in this series, we've talked about our expanding our understanding of what we think forgiveness is. We talked about the source of who our forgiveness comes from. We make a case for forgiveness that we have been forgiven. We find out why we need to forgive, and we just finished what forgiveness is not. So now we're going to take a look at what forgiveness is, and what's coming up is reasons we don't forgive, how to forgive. And so those are the key things we're going to wrap up in this in this series, which will happen in a couple of weeks. But that's the path we're going on. Corey Ten Boom. <laughs> Since the end of the war, I have had a home for victims of Nazi brutality. 
Those who were able to forgive their former enemies were able to return to the outside world and rebuild their lives no matter what the physical scars. But those who nursed their bitterness remained invalid. Wow. Forgiving will put you on the path to freedom. If you don't forgive, it will cripple you. When you don't forgive, you begin to destroy everything that you hold dear. Your spouse, your children, your work, the things you love. If you cling to unforgiveness, as in refuse, then you cannot love your spouse, children, family, as Christ designed you to. In Matthew 18, 21, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Now, Peter's trying to be generous here. He thought he might only have to forgive one or two times. But Jesus ends up saying, ah, no, 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 no. It's more than that, better than that. I tell you not, not seven times, but 70 times seven. (laughs) Forgive. Forgive. This is what we've been called to do. But if you don't understand what it is versus what it is not, you're not going to be able to. I love this next line. When you and I fail to forgive, it freezes the past pain into our ever present reality in our lives. It's instant replay all the time. Now, keep this in mind. I I have forgiven people who've hurt me deeply, and some of those memories have replayed in my mind. But the Holy Spirit has also been right there with me, not shielding me from, from the memories or removing them, but reminding me, hey, remember, you have forgiven. So now these, these images in my head, these memories, the bitterness associated with those memories are becoming less and less and less and less. I have forgiven. I'm reminded of it. Peter Hyatt wrote this. If you... Um, uh, hang on. If uh, I, I think forgiveness is literally life in the kingdom. It's constantly losing your life and finding it. It's bleeding. The life is in the blood. We are truly one body. When a body part refuses to bleed, give life, so it can receive more life, it's dead. Even if it looks alive for a few minutes. When only one person forgives, it looks like a man nailed to a cross. When two forgive, it looks like a good marriage. When all forgive, it looks like a happy dancing body, a great banquet for the kingdom of God. In that place, forgiveness no longer hurts, but in fact is ecstasy. Forgiveness, folks, is for your benefit. It's for you. Brad Jerzak wrote this. I usually say forgiveness is not saying it's okay, I'm okay, you're okay, we're okay. Forgiveness is taking your offender to the cross of Jesus Christ and leaving them there, releasing them with him, with Christ, in his care of his judgment. Wow. Forgiveness. Why do we need to forgive? Because we have been forgiven. We've been instructed to forgive. It's, it's, been a, a, it's a command, not a law, a command for our benefit. So how are we going to forgive? Why do we need to forgive? Well, I hope you'll come back next week and uh, tune in again as we dig into this really, really awesome topic of what forgiveness is. And you're going to find out that it is possible. But next week isn't right now. We're going to actually go into the second half of this program. I almost thought I was at the end, but we have a second half of this program to continue on. So I got more good news coming. Stay tuned for the next half in just a moment. Family run, family owned. So their focus is on you. Conestoga Lodge Retirement Residence is a full service retirement home in Kitchener. And you'll be impressed to know that they are not a big corporate chain. They're quality driven with a focus on each and every individual. Conestoga Lodge offers permanent and short-term stays. To book a free, no-obligation tour, you can call 519-576-2140 or visit online at conestogalodge.com. 
Are you looking for an encouraging church where you'll discover hope in God who truly loves and accepts you? Hope Fellowship in North Waterloo meets every Sunday at 1030, and the great coffee is only the first thing you'll appreciate. If you're looking for a safe place, a relaxed community of people who want to grow in the freedom of God's grace, welcome to Hope Fellowship, second floor of the St. Jacob's Outlet Mall. Learn more at hopefellowshipycc.com, and they do have that great coffee. Welcome back to the second half of Still Growing in Grace. I almost ended the first half thinking we were done for the day, but we're not. I got more good news. So let's go on and continue on what forgiveness is. Um, Paul Young, author of The Shack, wrote this about forgiveness. Listen carefully. This is a great quote. Forgiveness is not about forgetting. It is about letting go of the other person's throat. Forgiveness does not create a relationship. Unless people speak the truth about what they have done and change their mind and behavior, a relationship of trust is not possible. When you forgive someone, you certainly release them from judgment. But without true change, no real relationship can be established. Forgiveness in no way requires that you trust the one you forgive. But... Should they finally confess and repent? You will discover a miracle in your own heart that allows you to reach out and begin to build between you a bridge of reconciliation. Forgiveness does not excuse anything. You may have to declare your forgiveness a hundred times the first day and the second day, but the third day will be less. And each day after that, until one day you will realize that you have forgiven completely. And then one day you will pray for their wholeness. What a beautiful, beautiful quote. Thank you, Paul Young. By the way, um, uh, Paul Young is uh, going to be sharing some topics of um, uh, grieving and grace. So I'm, I'm going to invite you to visit hopefellowshipycc.com and you will see a, a note there about an event coming up. Back to what forgiveness is. Martin Trench, a pastor in uh, outside of, I think, Stony Plain, Alberta, he writes this, forgiveness is untying yourself from the things which were painful at the time, but are now over. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. In the Aramaic says, untie the knots that bind us as we let go of the bonds that we are holding others with. To me, that defines forgiveness. That was beautiful. So what is our motivation? We've been forgiven for every single thing. That is a motivation for everything we've ever done. It's all gone. But what about our method? How can we forgive? (laughs) I can do this because he has made me a new person. We need to know who we are in Christ. We need to know we have been made right. Ephesians 4 in the Passion Translation says this, now it's time to, to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you and to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within as your new life and live in union with him. For God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness, and you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. Verse 32, it says, but instead be kind and affectionate towards one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? Then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. This is why we forgive. This is the method of forgiveness. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18 says this. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he's become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. And God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself, and given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. What a powerful picture, but that's not it. There's more. Again, I see scripture as a profound foundation. First of all, as we see ourselves as forgiven, giving us the power to forgive others. That's This is the foundation I'm trying to lay here. In Colossians 3, 1-4, it says this, Christ's resurrection 
is your resurrection too. This is why we are to yearn for all that is above. For that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. Yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Pause there for a second. That is a powerful, powerful statement. It says, feast on all the treasures of heavenly realm. Keep your minds focused on things above, not with the distractions of below. Here in verse three, it says, your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life. And now your true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed for you are now one with him in his glory. Folks, if you don't know you were one with Christ, it could make this even more difficult because you're trying to strive for oneness, trying to strive for righteousness, trying to strive for forgiveness when it has already been given to you, credited to you. You have already been made new. There isn't two of you in you. There's only one of you. It's your union with Christ. This is the greatest secret that's been not shared enough in the church today. I think we need to learn more about that. The truth is this. Christ is your life. His righteousness is your righteousness. His life is your life. His love is, my, is, his love is your love, and which makes you a person who loves. Jesus is a forgiver. Therefore, you are a forgiver. Yes, it's in your DNA. The lie may be that you cannot forgive, but it's not true. And if you believe that lie that you can't forgive, you'll be in bondage. You can't forgive them because you believe that. I'm trying to show you that you can forgive. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me because he has made me brand new. You are a new creation. It happened 2,000 years ago at the cross. It happened before the foundations of the earth. You are a new creation. This next statement you need to hear carefully. If you remember back to uh, the list of what forgiveness is not that I did a couple uh, last week, um, uh, the one line was forgiveness is not just a one-time event. But if you listen to the description of that topic, I said, true, but it is also a one-time event, but it's also a process. So today, we're going to get into that. Forgiveness is an event and a process. The act of forgiveness is the event. Walking in forgiveness is a process. It's going to take time, and it may take a long time to walk it all out. The event. It's an event because it is a command of God. If it's a command, it's something we can do. It's an act of our will. Therefore, it must be an event. It's a choice, even sometimes with clenched fists and grit teeth. God, I forgive. I don't feel like it, but I want to obey you. I want to follow your command here. I want to do this because I know it's good for me. And we may do it through pain and tears. We may forgive at a moment in time, but it's going to take over and over. Like the quote, from, I think, from Paul Young, we do it a hundred times in one day. We repeat the, uh, the event and remind ourselves that the event has happened. It could take a long time. It could take years for some people. It really can. Don't rush this. Please don't. But it's also a process between the offended and the offender. Forgiveness will put you on the pathway to freedom, but it, but it becomes a process, a process of working it out in your life. God can make you forget, heal you, and make it go away, but that would be the exception, not the rule of thumb. I have witnessed way too much pain in my life and in other people's lives that I hardly have ever heard of anyone forgetting anything. They remember it, but the bitterness has gone away and the journey of forgiveness has taken a long time. When you forgive someone, you are dancing to the rhythm of the divine heartbeat of God. God invented forgiveness as the only way to keep his romance alive with the human race. This is important. I know for myself, um, 
Uh, I'll, I'll be honest here that I'll, I'll show you a bit of the process of what happened uh, in a practical way. And I think I've shared this in the show before, but uh, when my mother was very abusive to me growing up, uh, I, I had to forgive her because the Bible said to, and I got scared uh, by the church that I must forgive her. I go to hell. And so I did the words, the duty, but the heart change didn't happen until I knew my identity. And when I finally forgave my mom from my heart, there was more pain that kept coming up of different events. And I found myself having to continually forgive and repeat forgiveness and bring it up again and again. And even after she died, she died about uh, eight, six, seven years ago now. And there were the, the thoughts associated with her were getting more and more bitter. And the Holy Spirit brought me to her graveside one day. And God revealed to me, he said, Mike, if, if, if your mom now can see more clearly, which she can, because the veil has been lifted from her. She sees the spiritual realm after exiting her earth suit. If she could peek through these clouds just one time to say something to you, what would she say? And God clearly made it clear to me that she would say, I am so sorry. I didn't know. I couldn't have known. I had my own pain, my own darkness I was dealing with. I couldn't see through it or past it, but now I see and I'm so sorry. And I, I had this new joy come out of me and a new authentic freedom, a new release that I didn't know was possible or the one that I knew I needed to do. God did it. He's in charge of this process. Just surrender to him. He'll reveal to you who you need to forgive and when. Next week, we're going to talk about some of the reasons why we don't forgive, some of the hindrances. So I hope you'll come back and join us. It's been a pleasure. See you next time. Martin Small Engines and Auto Clinic in Elmira is more than small engines. Like their name says, Martin's is also a full-service auto clinic focused on automotive repair and service, brakes, tires, local lockout service, and so much more. Whatever you need, Martin's can do it. For that small-town feel with large shop quality, trust a team that really cares. Martin's Small Engines and Auto Clinic, Industrial Drive Elmira and martinselmira.com. Looking for adventure in the great outdoors? It's not far from your own backyard at Conestoga River Horseback Adventures. Fun for the whole family or why not your next corporate party? Trail rides are offered all year round and other options like pony rides and birthday parties for the young cowboys and cowgirls. Afterwards, you can relax and keep the party going in their large, comfortable lounge. Conestoga River Horseback Adventures, 519-888-6503 and horsebackadventures.ca. You've been listening to Still Growing in Grace. I'm Pastor Mike Zanker. Join me next Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. You can also watch these messages on YouTube or download our podcast at growingingrace.ca. Do you live locally? Visit hopefellowshipycc.com to find our service times and location. If this show has been an encouragement to you, consider making a donation today at growingingrace.ca and help us keep spreading this good news. Thank you again for tuning into Still Growing in Grace.